Oh my gosh. Everything that's on the What you can find on the internet. People crazy out there. Cray cray. Okay. So I am on page five of your notes. So I want you to take a moment to fill in this chart. And what this is all about, our objective on this is to show you, number one, why you better appreciate that calculator. Um, but more importantly, as we look at the steps of, cor of correlation of that dreaded formula, exactly what does it mean? For each step of it, what does it mean? Now, before we go any farther on this, please recognize that ugly formula for correlation, and it is on page 151 of your textbook. And what we've done here, what they're doing on this particular problem, is that they are breaking down all of, um, they're breaking down the formula. So, I've, you notice I've already put down what my um, x bar is, my standard deviation of x, and my standard deviation of y. But yes, I'm still putting this in my calculator, but this time I'm using something different. I'm using second bars. So go ahead and jot down this information that you have here, not just on your list, but also in your calculator. Now notice I have mine in my L5 and L6. So I'm going to go to Stat, go over to Calc, and this time I'm going to go to second bars. And here, that's my L5. and then my L6, then I'm pressing calculate. So as we can see, I have the means and I have the sum of x's and x squared standard deviation. That's where I got all of this data from. And then as I go down, now we can see here's the mean, the sum of your y's, the sum of your y's squared, where is it, where is it? And there is the standard deviation of the y. So that's where I got these values from. Okay, now you can go ahead and um, you notice I just wrote, wrote it down. I did not do the math on it. So you can do the math. Then we're going to take those values and divide those by the square roots. And you're going to fill in the rest of this. Here you do the math. So multiply those two together and I'll get it started not doing much of it though I'll be honest okay so this is nothing but a zero of course that was the easy one and yes I took one for the team and did the math for these two and there is the decimal you can finish this off but once you get to the sum of all of this it is going to give you 2.859 um, but that's not the correlation yet because as I've noticed here, don't forget about the n minus 1. So as you look at the n minus 1, which is the number, now this is important. There's not 12 of them here. There's six sets. So that's why it's 6 minus 1. And then here's the math. And yes, this is the correlation coefficient that if you just went to stat, calc, and went to your equation, and then what did I have this in? My L6, my L5, and my L6. Invalid. What did I do wrong? I thought I had something in my L6. Well, I'll look at it in a minute. I know what happened. Wrong calculator. So, so stat, calc, down to linear regression. Okay, I've got it in my L5 and L6. And there is my correlation. So just be happy that we don't have to do this the long way. But the whole premise behind doing this is so you can see the correlation is helping you to determine each value's relationship to the means, not just when I'm looking at the horizontal, which is the x, but also when I'm looking at the vertical. And then what it does is it takes this information and it looks how far away it is, um, how, how the standard deviation is affected when we're looking at the distance of each piece of data away from the mean. And yes, we just multiply it and then add them all together because of that summation. So 
Let's continue and look at the rest of this. Now, this deals with that objective that what happens if with outliers and what happens if I change units when it comes to correlation. So the question is, and this is very important, how would R change for all um, for these men if they were six inches shorter than the heights that are on the table? Well, here, let's check it out. So what I'm going to do in my L4, I don't want to delete anything, but I'm kind of, I don't have a lot of options here. So I'm going to go with my L6 minus 6 inches, and that gives me my L4, my new, um, new height. Because remember, the men are represented in my L6, which right there is the Y. I'm going to put down that this is my, well, I'm not going to put it down because I'll be too confusing for the future. But this represents the men, and with this representing the men, we said that they are 6 inches shorter. So L6 minus 6 inches. Okay, so now I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. I'm going to go to stats, calc, linear regression. Now this time I've got my women in L5 still, but my men are in L4. So let's do that. And then let's see what our correlation is. Look and behold, it is not any different. Oh my gosh, it is doing this again. Okay, got to pause, got to pause. Now I've got to do that again. So here I'm going to go over to edit, calc, and this is probably where it froze at about there. Now as I was mentioning, my women are in my L5. My men are now in my L4 because that's the minus 6 inches. I think it was okay when the video was there. Okay, don't mess with that, don't mess with that. Just go down to calculate, press enter. And this is what I was saying. Look and behold, my correlation is exactly the same. So, does the correlation tell us, okay, how is it change? It does not, okay. It is resistant. It will not change. And then the next question is, does the correlation tell us um, if the women tend to date men that are taller? Well, the bottom line is the correlation just tells us about an association between the height of men and women. It does not tell us whether women are going to be dating taller men. It just says that there's a relationship between them, and, but not, not predicting or telling us, um, again, that the men are going to be taller than the women or... Um, yeah, there's nothing that um, has here that tells us that the women are going to date men that are taller than them. Correlation doesn't tell us that. Correlation just says there is an association between them, but it's not something that's going to help us to make a prediction or to tell us if they tend to do it. They're just saying there seems to be a relationship, so therefore, okay... There's something to be said, taller women, taller men, etc. Okay. Next, as I look at part B, go ahead and read that. And this is saying, as you pause, okay, we're back. Okay, looking to see if the heights would change the centimeters rather than inches, is it going to change it? Well, the reality is you can go ahead and change it if you want to to convert it, but it didn't change when I added something, okay? So here, and it's not going to change if I multiply it by something. So here, there's no change in the R co correlation. It's not affected by change of units. So keep in mind that I have to convert everybody. So I don't know what the conversion coefficient is for that. Let me look it up. Okay, so there is a conversion. For one, every one inch, we have to multiply um, it by 2.54 to get the centimeters. Now, I have my men here and my women here, and um, this was the original data. So now, I'm going to go to my L3 and L4. So I'm going to go 
L5 times 2.54, and that gives me the measurement of the women in centimeters. And then I'm going to go to my L4, and that's going to be, I'm looking at my men, so that's going to be L6 times um, the 2.54. Okay, so now as I look at my new correlation, I go to stats, calc, down to um, linear equation. I believe, yep, I had it in my L3 and my L4. And, wait for it, ah, correlation is still the same. So, nope, no changes. Correlation is not affected by the change in variable. One more thing I want to show you is... Let's say that I change my axes, because which came first, the men or the women? Well, we're not getting biblical here. The reality is, what if I do this? Now, this um, particular situation right here has the women and then the men. But what if I make this the men and the women? Will that change the correlation coefficient? Well, let's check it out. So as I go to stat, okay, remember, the edit, remember my women were in L5 and my men were in L6. So now what I want to do is just go to stat. I want to do the calculation again here. And instead of my L5, L6, we already know everything we've done so far has the same correlation. But let me just change it back so we can remind ourselves, L5, L6. Okay, here is the correlation for with the women on the x-axis and the men on the y-axis. So now let's do this and let's switch them. Okay, so I'm going to make this L6 and L5. Because the reality is, in this particular situation, voila, what? Okay, the reality situation here is, in this, which has to come, which is the dependent and what's the independent variable? Does it matter? And the answer is no. And we saw, what did I do? I switched them. Now, I should have paid attention to the equation of a line. You know you're going to get two different equations. But the correlation coefficient is exactly the same. So we went a little bit beyond, beyond what they said with part B, but that's another good thing to know. So let's make a note of it. Okay, so I made a note here. If X and Y changes the core, so basically if we switch our X's and Y's, the correlation does not change. Okay, this is some good stuff right here. Now, I want to do problem number 22 with you in class together, but I just want to make a general um, statement. If you have a line, well, if you have a scatter plot, and you have an outlier out there, and you need to make a note of this somewhere, this point right there will actually make the, make the cor correlation, correlation bigger. So... Here, I'm trying to make this the same, which it definitely is not. Okay. So this one is going to be weak. And this is going to be stronger. And what this outlier does is it kind of stretches it. Here I've got a rubber band. And with the rubber band, I have all of these little points, let's say, nestled in here. Okay, it doesn't look much like a line, but if I pull it, look what happens. It does look more linear. So when you have an outlier, not an influential point like we talked about in some of the classes today, but if you have an outlier, what it's going to do is it's going to take it and it's going to stretch it to make it a stronger correlation. And that is in any direction, and I say that carefully. Now, as I make up these values, and these values are made, I mean, seriously, these are made up. If I give you a correlation right here, R to equal um, 0.7, again, making it up. 
So let's put a question mark there because I don't want you to go back and go, well, Yarbrough, you said, yeah, I'm totally making it up. And if I put an outlier out there, whatever the correlation is, it's going to be stronger or larger than 0.7. So here, I'm just going to put R is going to be greater than um, 0.7. So approximately 0.8. Again, totally made up, people, totally made up. But you get the point. And as I did it before with the rubber band, you have the data, and then it stretches it. Okay, which takes me to an idea that you might be wondering, well, how do I even recognize an outlier? Do you see how far away that thing is? Is that even close? No, 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 no. Okay, and what about this right here? See how far away that is? Those are outliers. They're away from the cluster. But there is no outlier formula. So, there's a couple of things that I'm going to quiz you guys on tomorrow. And what class you're in depends on what quiz you get. Number one, what does a outlier do to a correlation? Does it make it weaker or stronger? Next, what um, if we add, add a number to, to a value up to all the values, is that going to uh, change the correlation? So like we did in part A there. No, 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 it didn't. Okay, next question that you might see tomorrow. What happens if I flip my X's and my Y's? Is that going to change the correlation? No, 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 no. Okay, what happens here if I change the units? Will that affect your correlation? No, 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 no. And the last thing that I, you may get quizzed on tomorrow is, well, two other things. Making sure that you can find the correlation coefficient in your calculator. And what are the three things that we, that I mentioned earlier about correlation. Oh, my gosh, the thing is doing this to me again. It's killing me. So sorry, I got to repeat really fast. Okay. If the x's, if we flip, switch the x's and y's, does the correlation change? No, no. Okay. If we change the units, do the correlation change? No, no. If I add the exact same unit to everybody in group X or group Y, or both for that matter, will it change the correlation? No, no. If I, oh, and the three properties about correlation. Correlation does not imply causation. Correlation has to be with bivariant data, which means two quantitative data, X and Y, and... I forgot the other one. Let me think. And the third one here, which is, I don't know why I'm not, that's so important. Correlation only measures a linear relationship. Okay, people, peace out. And yes, you're having a quiz tomorrow. Bye-bye. Over the last couple of things that I said. Bye-bye. Oh, I'm sorry. It's an open note quiz, so if you've got your notes, you're fine. You've written down what I said is going to be on there. And if you did not take a note of what I said, rewind, make sure it's highlighted so you have it ready for tomorrow because this quiz will be quick. Peace out!